48 hours since the sitting president of the Republic of Ghana passed away suddenly. The reports we received was that he passed away uh, when he was receiving medical attention at the 37 military hospital. Now, in 48 hours, a new president has been sworn in, and the new president has been, has been approved as the leader of the ruling party, NDC. The new president has also been confirmed as the flag bearer of the party ahead of this year's election. Many have questioned the rush to find a successor for Preston Mills barely 48 hours after his death. And there are some who say the vacuum that will be left behind by a great man like Professor Mills must not be filled in two days. Tonight I have with me the NDC General Secretary Johnson Esiedunketia, very popularly known as General Mosquito. And we're going to discuss the constitutional implications of finding a successor to Preston Mills. What does the NDC constitution say? And now that uh, Preston Mahama has been confirmed as the flag bearer of the NDC, what does this mean ahead of the September 1 Congress date that has been set by the National Executive Committee of the NDC? You can join us with your comment on our Facebook, facebook.com, Multi TV Ghana, or on any of our multi, uh, multi TV Facebook portals. You can also join us by text 1760 across all networks. Thank you, sir, for making time to join us. Um, I do know that this is a very, very uh, sorrowful moment for yourself and for your party. So, the past 48 hours, tell me what has been going on in the minds of the members of the executive committee and the functional executive committee of your party. Thank you very much and uh, good evening to listeners. I think that um, what has happened is common knowledge to Ghanaians and to members of our party, i.e. the sitting president has passed on. And uh, democracy and nature abhors vacuum. So there are always provisions to deal with uh, issues of uh, succession so that there is uh, no power vacuum at any point in time. Uh, we're looking at it in two areas. You have uh, the, the national power structures and the party power structures. Um, if you are looking at the national power structures, you are looking at the national constitution, and uh, the provisions are very, very clear that uh, within 24 hours of the demise of a sitting president, the vice president must be sworn in as the president. Um, fortunately, we have able to go over that, and uh, President Mahama has been sworn in. Um, that creates another vacancy, that is the position of a vice president. Luckily, there doesn't seem to be any serious term limitations. Uh, the only provision is that uh, when a vacancy occurs at the level of a vice president, the sitting president nominates somebody for the approval of parliament. So we are waiting for the sitting president to nominate um, a vice president to be approved by parliament. And this will definitely be in consultation with the National Executive mm. Committee members, right? No, there is no But he will need provision. approval from the National Executive he doesn't Committee. He doesn't need any approval so from us. So his nominee as uh, vice president will be his choice and his choice only? It's a, it's, it's a, a sole prerogative of the office but of the The point the, I'm trying to explore is that um, for him to nominate somebody, that person must have been approved by the National Executive Committee or the functional executives of the party no, or the, the, the <laughs> Council of Elders. There is no provision like that. Uh, let me, let me uh, go further to explain. explain. Maybe you are trying to confuse the office of a running mate of the party with that of a vice president. They are two different positions. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the same applies to the office of a president and then the leader of our party. There are 
almost always occupied by the same person, but they are two different constitutional entities. So and we, what, de we deal with them. Yes. So say. we deal with them separately. That is why when the, His Excellency John Mahama was sworn in as the President of the Republic, we needed to make a public pronouncement that he assumes the leadership of NDC. Because whatever happens in Parliament alone does not apply to your party, our party. So according to the rules of our party, he must be named as the, the leader of our party by operation of uh, Article 26.1 of our Constitution. And that's how come we issued a, a, a press release saying that by operation of this article, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama now becomes the president, uh, no, 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 the, um, the leader of the, the party. leader of the party. Now we have a third issue <laughs> that has to do with uh, the flag bearership of our party. So um, according to the constitution, if we have a sitting president, he becomes the leader of our party until a flag bearer is elected. If it happens that a flag bearer is elected and he differs from the sitting president, then that flag bearer becomes the leader of our party. So where we are now, um, we have a leader, but we don't have a flag bearer yet. And that is the reason why we held the meeting today, the National Executive Committee meeting today, to try to explore the possibilities of getting a flag bearer for the party. So what uh, we essentially did today was to look at our constitution and look at the options for the selection of a flag bearer of the party. And um, we took several clauses in the constitution together, read them together, and then we had to come to some conclusions. What clauses did you take into consideration? Uh, first of all, there's a clause that deals with uh, Residual powers no, to the National Executive Committee. The first clause that we needed to look at was the clause that deals with the filling of vacancies when they are created in the party. And uh, uh, the Constitution provides that when there is a vacancy at the national level, it is the National Executive Committee that uh, takes a decision to fill that vacancy. So it's the exclusive right of the National Executive Committee. So uh, we looked at it and we realized that, well, we needed to pronounce on whether the vacancy created by the demise of a flag bearer can be taken like any ordinary uh, vacancy, vacancy, like the demise of a general secretary or and the consensus chairman is or, that or it, so on. It so can. when we read it, our legal committee advised that because all other positions are elected at one Congress, and there's always a special Congress for the election of the flag bearer. So the intention of the framers of the Constitution is not to regard the office of the flag bearer as an ordinary position like those that are elected by right. the other Congress. So that's why we couldn't use the clause that uh, deals with the filling of vacancies created uh, as a result of the demise or resignation of uh, a member of the National Executive Committee. So then we have to look at, we had to then migrate from there to look at the Constitution again and see whether we could treat um, this problem as all of us going back up in issue to a situation where a flag bearer has never been elected at all so that we uh, initiate the processes of electing a flag bearer. But that, 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 is, that is strange. I mean, why would you take the position as if a flag bearer has not been elected at all? No, we, are, we were exploring the options. I'll okay. come to okay. <laughs> We're exploring the options. <laughs> because if you have a flag bearer and uh, is dead, and there is no position. An elected flag bearer. Elected flag bearer. And there it is, means that the next flag bearer should be elected. And there is no, no provision for replacing uh, that flag bearer, then you can assume that, well, 
a flag bearer has not been elected. So let's go back and begin electing another flag bearer. There's one legal That's the view one like that. View, yeah. So we looked at it and realized that, well, our constitution also provides that when we are not in power, a flag bearer should be elected uh, at least 24 months before election. Now, when we are in power, a flag bearer should be elected at least 12 months before election. Which means that in both so of these it's cases, in both of these uh, cases, President Mahama would not qualify. That, that cannot apply. We cannot even begin or electing a flag bearer from the beginning at all because the clause that deals with the election of a separate uh, flag bearer up in issue does not apply. So we had to leave it there. And then... Uh, uh, go to explore further to see whether there is a specific provision that deals with the replacement of an elected flag bearer uh, less than a year into the elections. And unfortunately, there's nothing, nothing like, like that, that in our constitution. Mm -hmm. So the next step we had to migrate to is to look at the residual uh, powers of uh, that are in the constitution. And these residual powers rest in the National Executive Committee. And according to Article 50 of our Constitution, uh, it is clear that whenever any situation arises within the party, which situation has not been provided for by the Constitution, then the National Executive Committee is given the absolute right to make uh, the necessary uh, uh, regulations and decisions to handle the situation. So that is what we are operating within now, Article 50 of our Constitution. So um, we therefore proceeded to pass a resolution that uh, the leader of the party now be proposed to Congress, which Congress will be held uh, latest by 1st of now, September. Now, there are many people who have questioned the... The, the procedures you've just narrated to me. One, uh, Article 44 of your constitution uh, prescribes how uh, uh, a parliamentary, sorry, a presidential candidate should be, should be elected. Mm -hmm. Now, in the absence of any direct prescriptions from your constitution on how to replace the elected presidential candidate, many people argue that you could have resorted to Article 44 of your constitution, which prescribes uh, how a presidential candidate must be elected. I've already and told then, which you means that, that you, have to, you have to hold a Congress. I've to already allow told you that to Article 44 does not apply again because when you look at Article 44, it provides for opening of nominations uh, for I accepting. Heard, I heard your arguments, but why doesn't it apply? Is it That's because why it is, this is a special circumstance? It is an impossibility. Would this circumstance apply to anybody no. else who passes away? It's a legal impossibility because Article 44 provides for opening of nominations for a certain period of time. After the nominations have been filed, there's another period of time within which you should do uh, uh, vettings and the other things before you come to election. The time frame itself will take us to 2013. And we need to get a flag bearer before the end of September. So <laughs> that makes Article 44 not applicable to the situation. So what do you make of dealing. suggestions that possibly your constitution needs to uh, be reviewed? No, the in constitution... The of the, in the light of the lapses uh, that have come forth. I mean, there were no prescriptions for, That's a um, prescription. The prescription the, is, is Article the 50, powers? the residual powers. So uh, it has been properly. And you done. think the res residual powers are clear enough to, to mandate the, the processes you went through? Virtually, you handpicked uh, uh, President Mahama. No, the residual powers are adequate to deal with this situation. So you and wouldn't need any express provisions in the Constitution to directly say one, two, three are the steps to follow in the event that the sitting president, who is a leader of the party, passes away. You are now dealing with the passing away of a sitting president. Nobody can anticipate all the uh, 110 possibilities, <laughs> you know, in a democratic process. You are dealing with the president who has passed away. You cannot... You couldn't have anticipated a president who has suddenly been taking a cripple 
or, or something else. That is why there is always wisdom in providing residual powers. And in this case, we are fortunate that we have sufficient residual powers to deal with the situation, and that's how we have dealt with it without any So what's the level of cooperation and agreement um, within the rank and file of the party about this, this choice, the choice of President Mahama as a flag bearer? No, the choice of President Mahama as a flag bearer is yet to be confirmed. Yes. Okay. What it is is that the national... So what did you do today if it's yet the to The National be Executive Committee has nominated has put in proce procedures that in the situation that we are faced with, we pass a resolution that we cannot go into a full hall Congress, we cannot go into, uh, you know, filling the vacancy like any ordinary vacancy by the National Executive Committee. But what we are going to do is that we will be holding a Congress uh, latest by 1st of September and then because of the time frames of opening nominations, closing nominations, vetting, and so on, which will take us into 2013, that Article 44 cannot apply. So the National Executive Committee proposes that we should, uh, uh, you know, we, we have proposed the sitting leader. Unopposed. To be endorsed at Congress. Unopposed. Because sessions of our Constitution requires that before you become a flag bearer, you need 50% plus one of the votes. Votes. So, and that one you will go, can still you, be operated. Okay. So we have nominated the sitting leader to be endorsed by Congress. Hopefully, Congress uh, would endorse him by 50% plus one. If he fails to get 50% plus one, then at that time we will be in Congress, and the whole Congress will decide our so, next step. So tell me, this means that um, the door is shut for anyone who holds uh, presidential ambitions in your party, at least for now, right? For the time being, because if you want to go by Article 44, opening nominations, uh, 21 days, closing, allowing for vetting, and so on, that will take us beyond the, the period uh, when we ought to be filing our presidential candidate with the Electoral Commission. That comes somewhere uh, getting to the end of So September. how prepared are you for people who really are interested in contesting and might, might decide to, to go to court and seek legal <laughs> well, interpretation they are free and restraint? To, they are free to go to court. I don't think that any court will, 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 will rule that uh, an impossibility be made possible because we cannot wind up the term to take us back to uh, what do you call it, 24 months to the election, and that court would have to overrule the residual powers, and I don't think that anybody like that will have any chance at all to overrule the residual powers. We are firmly within the, uh, our powers as a National Executive Committee to act in the way we have acted. So what do you say to those who suggest that this whole process is, is being rushed to find a successor to President Mills just two days after his death. Maybe they are not... I mean, if President Mills was a traditional they are, they are ruler, not uh, we are accorded uh, <laughs> the due respect. <laughs> you know, in the case of traditional uh, uh, leadership, by now we wouldn't have even announced the death. You understand? If, uh, you know, the chief of one of the big kingdoms in this country dies, it takes more than 40 so days. So you were saying that uh, more than those 40 who are making days. that suggestion do not appreciate what exactly? I'm saying that if a, pro a prominent chief in this country dies, it takes more than 20, 40 days for it to be made public. But this is a different type of political anima. We are dealing with uh, multi-party democracy. And so you couldn't be applying traditional rules <laughs> to... to so, I mean, as far as you're democracy. concerned, mm. this is not a rush. It's, it's, it's okay. It's normal. I mean, so those who have... Unless you want us to you... abolish all our constitutions and, and go back to traditional rule. Because the, the national constitution, the 1992 constitution tells us that you have to replace a, sitting, a, a dead president within 24 hours. So and, and so, but if it were in a tradition, he was a traditional ruler, it would take more than... 
20 days for the announcement to be made. So it will not, it will not be thinkable at all to uh, consider replacing him within 24 hours. But, but that is what it is. Now, earlier when I started, I, I asked you um, what's going on in the minds of members of the party, the executive, uh, functional executives, national executive committee following the death of Preston Mills. What's, what are you thinking about? Or is it all you, uh, I mean, are you only thinking about replacing him? Finding no, a successor? We are, we are in, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, funeral mood, and you can know from my body language, yes. and that is what is happening throughout the country. But you cannot sleep over certain things that uh, have, have to, to be, be done. done. So, so we are painfully doing those things, but we are still going. Uh, uh, we are still doing the, 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 the celebration, but we have to painfully go into those things. As I, I, I talk to you now, we have about 60 parliamentary seats, you know, parliamentary candidates to be selected. And the program is already ongoing to do that. We cannot say that we have lost our leader, so that process be put on hold. We have decided that that process must go on because we must have a full complement of our candidates before we go into the, the filing of nominations, which comes in September. So we don't have any the luxury of time. Um, we had planned an outreach to link up with our people, prepare the grounds for the campaign launch, and so on. We have taken a position that that outreach must continue, and except that the, out, the mood of the outreach will assume, uh, if you like, some aspects of a mourning mood, because that will also help us to prepare for the funerals and, uh, and the other things. So the work must go on. I remember one president of USA was on a flight when the sitting president died. The vice president was on the, on the flight. He had to be sworn in in an aeroplane. And he came to take over. So that is the logic of multi-party democracy, however painful it is. We have to live by the rules. We're discussing 48 hours after the death of the sitting president and the swearing-in of the new president. Issues that have been happening within the NDC, which is the ruling uh, party. In the studio with me, I have Johnson Asir and Ketia, also very popularly known as General Mosquito. Um, Ms. Nketia, you had a personal relationship with uh, Professor Mills. Yes. Tell me, uh, how do you feel about his loss? Well, I feel it has a very great loss because uh, beyond politics, Professor Mills taught me in the University of Ghana. He was uh, one of our law lecturers. I was doing administration, and he was teaching us uh, company law, commercial law, and the others. He kept asking why I wasn't doing law and all that. So we became very close. And um, I remember him always saying that if we were in US, he wouldn't even allow me to write the exams. He would give me my A straight before the exam. So we began that personal touch. And um, after I left, we worked in various places till he became the commissioner of customs. And uh, I was in parliament on the finance committee. So as fate will have it, he had to come to parliament to get his uh, um, approval. Things approved. Mm. And so we reconnected. And we worked very well there. Uh, I would say that at that moment, it's like an honorable member of parliament dealing with a uh, uh, chief executive of uh, an, uh, a, state a, a state institution. So I was a little bit <laughs> high. Then all of a sudden, he got nominated as a vice president. And then, uh, so he became, again, uh, my boss. So I'm sure that he influenced, to a great extent, the decision to make me um, a deputy minister of state at that time. And he kept on encouraging me and calling me, telling me that he was 
proud that uh, uh, I had delivered to his satisfaction and so on. So that's how we became close till then Mantes moved to a point where he then became a flag bearer and I found myself as the general secretary of the party. So I have seen him as my father. Uh, I, um, happy, I was happy at that time and I'm still happy that he accepted the limits below which I will not go because he understands me as uh, somebody who stick to principle. And I was very, very happy that he also accepted that. And these things got demonstrated in the first um, really democratic primaries of the NDC where he had to contest with the um, three other presidential candidates. Everybody felt that uh, he, having been an existing flag bearer, would have it all through. I insisted on applying the rules. And those who did not understand me and who did not understand um, uh, Professor Mills thought that they could just go and tell him that I was a bad person and that I was uh, impeding um, his, his bid to become a flag bearer. This was a time when he was contested with uh, Kospio Gabra, Elijah Mahama, and, uh, and uh, one, the other businessman in Accra. I remember Mates came to a crunch where uh, I went to review the Congress grounds and I realized that um, the supporters of Professor Mills have started pasting his posters inside the hall and on, on, on the wall, which, which was, was against, against the established rules. Mm -hmm. So I ordered that those things would be removed. And there was a big confrontation between me and one of his uh, loyalists. Right. I stood my grounds and got the things removed. And I was reported to him. So he called me and said, what was happening? And I indicated to him that um, the outcome of the Congress was not as important as the processes that will lead to <laughs> his being elected. So I felt that we must do things very transparently without bias. And uh, if he's confident of winning, then after he has won, his campaign will be easier. He understood me and said that I should do what I thought was right. And I am happy I did it. Um, again, when we were approaching Sunyane, everybody saw how we transparently we conducted uh, these uh, elections. It came to a point that um, within a week or so, to the Congress, there was some musician who suddenly came up and started announcing that uh, he had composed a victory song for Professor Mills and was announcing the names of the national executive who were going to launch that song. That song in support of Professor Mills. I quickly had to come out, issue a press statement to distance the national executive committee from the launch of that song. And I did indicate at that time that we did not have a flag bearer <laughs> at that point in time, because we were now going to Sunyane to choose a flag bearer. I stepped on uh, a lot of toes. But I'm happy that the professor stood by me and called those people to order and said so that it's I obvious me that to you, do my work. It's obvious that you have lost a great person, a very great, great mentor, mentor in your life. In my life who understood me, understood the principles I was applying and he respected my opinion a lot. Now, um, there are many people who have argued that, uh, who have suggested that the, the passing of Professor Mills is bringing unity um, everywhere in the country. Is his death bringing unity to your party, the rank and file of your party? We hope so. If it happens like that, then we would have paid the greatest tribute to the memory of the old professor because everybody knows him to be somebody who has always stood for peace and unity. So if he has to sacrifice his life to make sure that there is peace and unity in the party, I think that that would have been a befitting memory.
What about reconciliation with the, the former first family, the Rawlinses? How far did it go before um, President Mills passed away? Well, if you are talking about personal reconciliation between uh, the Rawlinses and Professor Mills, I will not be able to talk about it. But if you are talking about um, reconciliation within the party, I didn't think that there was any. Why are you unable to, to talk about reconciliation <laughs> because it has Professor to, Mills and the Rawlinses? If it has to be at personal levels, then I will not be part of it because what about I'm neither at party <laughs> Rawlinses. Now I'm was saying anything that arranged? There was nothing in the party to be reconciled. The party was focused. So there were no differences between the president and the former president, you would say? I mean, Mills Not, and Rollins? I'm saying that if you are talking about that one, then you are talking about personal relationships. But if you are talking about reconciliation within the party, I have stated that there was nothing to reconcile about. Because we have gone into uh, elections, we have selected a flag bearer, and it was uh, the democratic duty of everybody to fall in line and then respect the, 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 the decisions of the party. And that was uh, what was happening. And uh, I'm happy to know that many people fell in line. But it remained, and I have said it in this studio, studio before, it remained the democratic right of every individual, including President Rollins and the wife, to decide whether to uh, uh, what to do with their future. You understand? Because membership of a party is not sacrosanct. You cannot compel people to belong to a party. You cannot compel people to leave a party. If I decide today that I'm not going to be NDC, it is my decision. I will leave tomorrow. So and going it's, ahead, it into, something going ahead into so the elections, when you, look you don't at think that if these uh, uncertainties about unity persist in your party, that will not be too good? There is no uncertainty at this stage at all. What's the relationship between the current executives and uh, the, former, the, former press, the former first family, the Rawlinses? We don't have any such structural relationship between the Are they in agreement the with the choice of uh, Please, President uh, If I may, I may end. There is no structural relationship in our constitution that says that national executives should relate with the former president or former president wives and so on. We have institutions in the party. You have council of elders. You have uh, uh, the office of the, of, of, uh, of the national executive committee. You have the office of a founding father of the party and so on. So long as these offices are operating, that's all about it. And you don't have to be friends to be able to operate in the political party. What do you have to be? You have to accept the common principles, the common ideals of the political party and the common beliefs in the political party. And then you are in the political so party and you work towards a common goal. So you don't have to be personal friends or personal enemies or whatever. So politics does not have to go to personal levels. You have to understand that this is what we are in for and this is what we are working towards. And once you are able to work towards that common goal, you are home and dry. And everybody agrees with a common goal of nominating President Mahama as the flag bearer? <laughs> I'm saying that when you take the constitution, these are the processes that lead to the selection of a flag bearer. These are the processes that lead to the selection of a parliamentary candidate. These are the processes that lead to the selection of a general secretary, and, and so on and so forth. It doesn't require the agreement of every single individual of the party. But what the, you but need but to look at, key, what you need to look key at, key to the foundations what of you your need party. to look at is the institutions within the party and make sure that their requirements have been satisfied. We don't have anything in the party called key or padlock or anything in the party. What we have is that this is the office of the Council of Elders. If they need to be consulted on this particular situation, once they are consulted, they need not all agree. <laughs> once the majority of them agree according to the rules, the Council of Elders... So you wouldn't agree. know if the former uh, First Family are in agreement with a nomination. I mean, I'm, I'm putting these questions... I wouldn't questions, want to I'm find out at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to find out. 
Because why? why wouldn't you? I mean, seeing that the, for, uh, the former president, why Rollins, would you go to his mm. ideals Please. of probity and accountability why would you want form to go the basis to, of your party? Why would you want to go to find out beyond the requirement that this is the uh, this uh, decision falls be, uh, within the competence of the National Executive Committee? That National Executive Committee has decided. Then, as a general secretary, you'll be going to individuals to find out who has agreed and who does not agree. It is not part of my work. And so, I mean, I mean, <laughs> looking ahead, my yeah. point is that mm -hmm. uh, I ask these questions because the Rollins, uh, former President Rollins' ideals of probity and accountability yeah. forms the basis of your party. Mm -hmm. So he is a key person in your party. Mm -hmm. So were you go through the processes to nominate a flag bearer of your mm -hmm. party mm -hmm. who is contesting uh, for the president. Mm -hmm. He definitely must have a blessing. <laughs> I don't, I don't he understand. definitely must bless your choice. I don't understand some of the things. If he needs to bless the choice, then it will be stated in the constitution that when you get a flag bearer, you should go for the there must, be, of the, the there must be some blessing of a pope here or <laughs> somebody. So, so tell but me. But I'm saying that we are operating in a legal environment, and once you, you satisfy the laws, you are home and dry. And the principles of probity, accountability, and so on and so on, cannot be owned by one individual. They are universal principles, and everybody who subscribes to those principles <laughs> believe in what the party stands for. So what we are always concerned with is that every member of the party will be able to point out where they feel that the party is not going by those principles. Then we correct them. If we have to run the party as if uh, certain principles are the personal That's reserve. Rules uh -huh. No, no, no. The personal reserve of a particular individual, and that individual should decide which represent probity and accountability, then we are not running a democratic so, institution. So, so we run a democratic institution on our common understanding of the meanings of these principles. Right. And then we operate right. alongside So, so tell me, tell so me, So it comes to a point where the person who espoused them, if he's found wanting of the principles, we have to point it out and hold him also to these same principles. So it cannot be said that the principles will flow from one point and that, and that some people will be above those principles and some people must go along those principles. We are all equally bound by those principles and we must be prepared as members of NDC to hold each other to the principles. Now tell me what uh, kind of leader uh, are members expecting President Mahama to be? I mean, we had uh, President Rollins. Uh, President Rollins, he had his nature, he had his personality, he mm -hmm. had his type of leadership. We had Kufo, Kufo had same. And then we had uh, the late Professor Mills, may his soul rest in peace. He had his own uh, style of leadership. What kind of a leader are party members and the rank and file of executives expecting uh, John Mahama to be? We expect John Mahama to be a very democratic leader. Who that is basic. Yes. D very democratic leader who is prepared to run this country and the affairs of the party on the, the, the principles of rule of law. That is first and foremost in the minds of every member of NDC. When you take uh, the history of this country, you realize that uh, Nkrumah was a, a, a very strong leader. Um, at some point, he was accused of dictatorship and so on. He was overthrown. So you expect Mahama to be a strong leader too? Please, if I, if I, <laughs> if I'm not, if I don't end the, the, the submission, it is not easy because to... Because I'm trying to probe and get no, to the time No, I'm saying that Nkuma was a very strong saying. leader. Yeah. And then somehow the whole country came together and said, oh, uh, he was a dictator, he was overthrown. Then Buzia came. Buzia was seen to be too soft a leader. He was overthrown. And then he was overthrown. And then you came to Achampong. Now Achampong also was a, a strong leader. We ran through Achampong's era for quite some time. And then 
President Rollins came that time as Chairman Rollins. And he became an extremely strong leader to a point. So you realize that as we were transiting from uh, PNDC to uh, uh, democratic, rule. democratic rule, he was able to win the election twice. But as we were approaching 2000, and we freed the airwaves, freed the media space, uh, allowed for democratic discourse, and so on and so forth. It was emerging naturally that Ghanaians believed in stronger institutions rather than strong personalities. That's how it came. Now, um, so General, let's, let's, elections, let's talk about, let's and, talk about mm -hmm. the vice presidential nomination yeah. that uh, the, the current president, John Mahama, has to make. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that the constitution doesn't put a cap on the duration that mm -hmm. he needs to take in making up his mind. Yeah. But uh, we also know that there is clamor for that position within your party. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, the back and forth that is going on in uh, the, this nomination. I mean, No, there are various discussions at <laughs> various levels. Everybody uh, uh, mentioning <laughs> names of their favorites and, and so on. And I feel excited that we have a democratic institution like that where people are exchanging ideas freely about the choice of a, a vice president. It, it's very great for us. We you have see, been hearing a lot of names. And even well, what are some of, what are was, some of the names that have been coming You up? know what is interesting? When I was uh, moving from the head office to this place, some people came to my office, and they say that, oh, you are our nominee for, 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 for vice, vice president. president. So I, Would you love to be I, I vice love, president? I love this, you know. But, uh, but you, but you would love it, to be vice president, don't you? to think about it. It tells you the level of freedom in the party now for people to be, you know, So seriously, tell me, freely tell me some of the about, names about that, some of the names that are popping up. No, there has not been any forum to gather names, but I can tell you the names I have heard. What names have you heard? <laughs> I've heard about uh, Dr. Bucci. I've heard about uh, Mr. Guzitano. I've heard about Honorable uh, Fuswan Pofu. I've heard about uh, Mrs. Sheriaite. I've heard about uh, Spiogabra. <laughs> I've heard about E.T. Mensa and uh, Sylvester Mensa. And the last thing I heard before entering here is I see a ah, <laughs> so, so That's interesting. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now, these, so names, these, these, are, names these, names these names you've mentioned are key yeah. people mm -hmm. in your party. Sure. Now, uh, experts say that the decision that the president makes mm -hmm. will determine mm -hmm. his priorities in governance. Mm -hmm. Which of these names do you think will match the leadership style of Mahama to make him a good candidate for December 2012? Maybe you want us to chat, uh, you want us to venture into uncharted waters. I don't talk about areas where I don't have the competence to talk about. And uh, some of the names but also. But you're a general secretary. Some of, of the, the names have also come. I, I heard about uh, uh, Miss Hannah Tete, and then uh, many, many, many. So, uh, so what will be the really, What will be the consideration <laughs> of the party going into the elections? Are you going to look at the uh, ethnic or regional balance? I mean, President Mills coming from Central Region and. Uh, uh, John Mahama from the northern part of the country created a certain balance. Now, are you going to go that way? President Mahama, as a candidate from the northern part of this country, are you going to balance it with South? Are these considerations not going on already in your party that you, General Secretary, cannot tell us about? <laughs> Let me tell you why I cannot be talking about it. First of all, the selection of a vice president it's not within the prerogative of the party. The party has no role at all in the selection of, well, a, uh, of a watching, vice president. You're watching <laughs> uh, General Mosquito, you were telling me uh, mm -hmm. about these names. Yeah. Now, we're going into election 2012. Mm -hmm. We must not kid ourselves that the NDC will go in unprepared against an opponent like Nana Kufuado. Sure. What is the strategy? 
thank you very much. I was talking about uh, the selection of, uh, of uh, uh, vice president. And um, let me uh, go into some of the issues. A vice president, as I have said earlier on, has to be nominated by the president for approval of parliament. So the party has no role in that. And yeah, you, you said it over and over. Said and it. I know that's what And what so the situation we have now, um, we need to fill the position of a vice president. And later, we need to find a running, a running mate. mate. To exactly. our presidential candidate. So is the party the reason strategy? why we are not talking about the filling of the position of a vice president now is that it's clearly outside our constitutional mandate as a political party to talk about it. It is it lies in the bosom of the president. If he chooses to find our views or something, but definitely we'll be he grateful. will seek we'll he'll be seek grateful. advice from the council but of elders in making same, that choice. No, there is no provision like that. The provision for the consultation of Council of Elders and National Executive Committee has to deal with a running mate. So the vice president is not necessarily the running mate. I have seen countries where in filling the position of a vice president, they have chosen some, uh, somebody, some accomplished administrator to fill the position for the rest of the term. So he does the work of a vice president, and the party has been allowed to select a different running mate from the vice president. It is an option that the president may wish to, to, to choose. If, on the other hand, the president decides that he wants a vice president who will migrate to become a running mate in a seamless transition. Which then, I think is reasonable. Yes. Wouldn't you say then, so? then that is where he needs to consult the National Executive Committee and the Council of Elders, even as he's beginning the selection now. Otherwise, the, he will be caught up in a situation where he will now want to present his vice president to the party for endorsement as a running mate, and, and no, there may be difficulties. And no such consultation and there has will be, started. there will be difficulties. So that's why I'm saying that uh, it lies in the bosom of the, vice pre uh, the, the current president to decide that, look, I want... Uh, a vice president who will migrate to become my running mate. So I better consult the appropriate authorities within the party now so that when I nominate him as my vice president and he gets approved, then in the event that he's migrating to become my running mate, it becomes seamless and very peaceful. So has any but such... But now because there has not been any such consultation, and uh, because we have not confirmed a flag bearer, you cannot be talking about a running mate. So the party in its meetings now cannot be talking about the running mate. Right. So, so it means that your priority now is choosing the to vice choose. president, which is a constitutional mandate. Yes, that one is a, will be the priority of the president. Yes, and mm -hmm. what, I, what I really want to establish mm -hmm. is that in choosing a vice president, sure. I'm, I'm very certain that the vice president will consider one compatibility, will mm -hmm. consider the relationship with the person, will also consider in the event of going into a, an election mm -hmm. and in the event that if he decides to use the same person as a running mate, a, his candidature will be strong. Yeah. So, I mean... I can't understand mm. why these discussions have not started, honestly. So tell me, tell me, I mean, what are the considerations for, maybe for choosing is, the, the vice, the vice <laughs> Maybe these questions candidate. must go to his to he himself, the president. It will be my wish, my personal wish, that anybody who is elected as a, a vice president now would migrate to become a running mate. So we will be expecting that the appropriate consultations will be made with us and with the Council of Elders. So we get uh, uh, a vice president who then will migrate in a seamless fashion to become uh, the running mate. And since those consultations have not started, you cannot I speculate. cannot talk about it. I've only heard about these speculations in the media and uh, running like wildfire and 
you know, nobody. And you cannot, you cannot. Um, okay, it. personally, from mm. your personal point of view, which of these leaders that you mentioned do you think will, will fit the bill for for a Mahama ticket? Well, it depends on the preferences of the of the president. I can generally talk about a situation where, if you have, um, you know, a leader who is uh, who is perceived as strong, then normally uh, they look for somebody who is more accommodating to become his running mate. That's one position. There is another. Uh, situation where uh, a leader who is perceived as strong will also be attracted to another strong deputy so that they work together and, and so on. There are cases where you have a leader who is perceived as uh, uh, very democratic and uh, you know not too strong so but very likable who wants another personality of that sort, or a stronger personality, and so on. These are all decisions I'm sure the His Excellency, the President, will be looking at and now, to see how they can get a good. Person. Tell me, General Mosquito, mm -hmm. is the NDC in trouble? Has the death of President Mills exposed the NDC to weaknesses which is likely to cost them in an election? No, not at all. I don't think that the NDC is near trouble at all, <laughs> not to talk about being in trouble. We are bereaved. We feel very sad about the loss. We think that uh, we would have been very comfortable with our old father taking us into elections for him to complete his two terms and so on. But uh, having said beyond that, I think that uh, when DC uh, is unshakable and uh, there are challenges, but we are ready to deal with those challenges, and we think that we can safely go through this election. Are you as confident today as you were when uh, Professor Mills was alive? I mean, confident of the outcome of the elections? Very, very confident, because the uh, Better Ghana agenda was not woven around a single individual. It is an institution, NDC, so, that developed the Better Ghana agenda. And, uh, and the record and is there for the everybody to see. The record is there for everybody to see. And um, I, I think that the structures that will carry the, the fight forward um, still exist. And I don't know whether you've heard our songs before. We, <laughs> we have one song that, 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 that said that uh, uh, when there is NDC, no fears, arise, arise. Be quiet and don't be silly. We are the famous NDC and we never say die. That's one of our songs. Before we go, and final the other question. song is that <laughs> <laughs> the other song is that the revolution continues. Kids may go, kids may come, but the revolution will continue. My last question, General Mosquito. Mm -hmm. How do you rate John Mahama's candidature in an election uh, with Nane Kufuado. Very, very high. And I think that uh, it's just as high as the candidature of Professor Mills over Nane Kufuado. And so we don't have any difficulty at all in getting uh, John Mahama to win the next elections. We are very, very confident about that. And I'm sure the thing my colleagues in MPP will not be comfortable about is that John Mahama will be going into the 2016 election still as an incumbent. And they would be very uncomfortable about it at this time. Well, we'll wait to see. Thank you very much for your time here on PMX.